said it wrong, Retropia. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, solitude. Can you talk to us uh, about solitude? We're in a private solitude. Bum, 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 solitude. It was a song that was going to go on the jazz album. Yeah. And it, was a, it had a very Latin feel to yes. it. And I was still feeling very Gilberto Gil, that kind of yes. flavor. Yes. And um, for some reason, it didn't end up on there. And it was something that, you know, I thought to myself, why did we not put it on? It was like, and when I was trying to get some tracks for the album, I wanted something that was obviously uniquely different, mm -hmm. but also that I could also have some, some real percussion, some real guitars. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I do like, I do like Latin music yes. as well. You know, yes. um, it, it's kind of close to the Caribbean with Calypso of and course. Steel Band, yes. and it has that kind of thing. And I wanted something that would be within the, all the other records, a sort of an interlude track, mm -hmm. an interlude track that basically, when you're sitting down having a glass of wine or champagne, in my case, you know, something that's really cool and also uh, a different influence. You know, because I feel that the Retropia album has different genres of musical yes. styles, but yes. it's still, I'm singing it. Yeah. But with, with um, Solitude, um, a kind of a Latino expression. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you said about different styles, because it leads me right straight to what I was going to ask you about next, which is an ACDC <laughs> song, <laughs> Highway to Hell, mm -hmm. and I had to kind of check my CD, <laughs> and I was like, oh dear, they've, you know, something's happened here. They must have, when they were mastering the CD, they obviously, is this Lee John? <laughs> what is this? Because it, it, it was a little like, whoa. So, what, I, I was going to ask you, like, why did you pick that? Nothing well, wrong with it. It's just kind of, it's different. It is. I mean, that's what I like. I've always been edgy in my expression and my musical taste, but not always. And in your videos. And in my videos, always different. But I've never always done it on CD, well, CD, vinyl, whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't always had that time to show it. And I was working with this, this artist, and actually the artist that did the album cover, his name is uh, David Lalou, but he's also known as Redito. He has a team of people. So if you look inside the album, yeah. there's all these little sort of uh, yes. graphic things. And yes. he's, an ex he's, uh, he's an expressionist, he's an artist expressionist. Yes. And we were in his studio, and we were doing a project, funnily enough, with the Gibson brothers. Mm. And the Gibson brothers um, were great friends of mine. Yes. And uh, they did Cube and all that, and uh, yeah, KSRR. Yeah. And um, we were talking about some songs to do. And I was saying, I want to do something different for the album. And he started playing the, a few different things. And I thought, oh, ACDC. I said, yeah, but I've got to, I said to him, I need to do it the Lee's way, <laughs> with a tinge of the gospel going, Give a little bit of something else, but edginess, you know. Living easy, living free. And um, I almost sounded a bit like Tina Turner at one point. And they were saying, no, yes, no, no, keep that, keep that, keep that. It's really cool, you've got to keep that. And, but I liked it because I thought it was like, it reminded me when we're in a room and we're just jamming. And it was just a, a free musical expression. So we yeah. were there just doing it. And it just came out, ha ha ha, way to hell. And, and, and we said, let's put it down. And I thought, that's taking me back to how I really started in music. Really? Very basic. All the, all the percussion stuff is all boxes and all different shakers yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then we took it and took it into an, another studio to master it, but not refine it greatly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it very raw. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's what you get. Well, you do get that. <laughs> you get that. I'm sure you get that. <laughs> Now, uh, there's a, there's a, 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 I think, a very inspirational song, mm -hmm. Bright of Day. Now, you correct me, but have you done that live? No, I've never done that live. No, I've never. Wow. There's a story behind that, and it's a, it's a sad one. Last year, I had a very tragic time. I lost a lot of very personal yes. people. In actual fact, doing this album, I must say, totally was a, a total personal, emotional experience for me. It's yes. the first time that I was under so much personal grief yeah. but still had to come through and enlighten myself through music yeah. and it showed me sometimes how the universe is and it, it brings you back mm. and it actually you know it was like my god how am I going to do this I had to uh, put to rest on my best friends I had to put my sister to rest because she passed and the funny thing I was in Munich and I heard my sister had passed mm -hmm. and I was doing this project and I was writing with his producer, mm. and I was writing the track Brighter Day. Mm. And what happened was, um, 
I took, brought it back home and obviously I put my sister to rest and I put it on the computer, from the computer, and I wouldn't look at the song at all. Wow. And I just thought, I can't look at it. And then, somehow or the other, I, was, I knew I was going to France to do the album, I was still looking at certain tracks, and I opened the MP3 and I listened to it, and I thought, she's speaking to me. Wow. And I felt she was telling me that I have to. Keep going. Keep going. And the lyrics I wrote were right today, and that basically, you know, we go through all this and we have to try and be strong. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, maybe I need to really expose this to everybody. I need mm -hmm. to let this side of me be shown. Yeah. And so um, there's two songs, that one, Brighter Day, I did the best I could. There's, there's two different uh, yeah, stories with yeah. that. But Brighter Day was my sister's influence. And, you know, it's, I feel her here. I didn't talk about it, you know, I get a bit worked up. But it's one of those things where I felt if I can encourage people, I call it my Michael Jackson song. That's what I call yeah, it. Yeah. Heal the world and stuff. I call it my yeah, Michael Jackson great. song. And, and, and basically my background vocals that I work with, they're on it singing with me. And it's, it's the first time I've done that kind of song in a very, very long time that, you know, I think could be inspiring. inspiring yeah, very much, people. very, yeah. and very much. That is, you know, that is very much how it comes across. Mm. Yeah, it's great. Right. Well, good that you did that. I yeah, think, yeah. You know. I also think that what you just referenced is really important because what people, you know, music, you know, can be used for many different things, but mm. one of the things it absolutely does provide for people is healing. Yeah, and that's what I felt with Brighter Day. I felt I need to heal myself. Exactly. I probably need to heal others. Exactly. And there are people in the same place as me. Mm -hmm. And there are people that have supported me and given me my career. Absolutely. Definitely. So I feel we have to have that communication yeah. when they write me or email me and say, Lee, you know, this song means something to me. I can actually say, well, it, it did to me. That's exactly. why I wrote it. You yes. Know? yes. And I must say, um, the, the co-writer co with me, um, was very helpful. It was he, he just knew what I was going through, mm -hmm. this turmoil. But we ploughed through it, yeah. and we did the song. You know, so it was uh, another. I think I was very tested, put to the test, yeah. because yeah, sometimes much. you have life so free and it's so easy to things, woo, and then, and then all of a sudden, bam, it hits you. Yeah. And uh, and then I had to really show how I could maintain it, yeah. and it's given me more inner strength. Good. Mm. Good. Well, I, I know we don't have a lot more time, so I'm going to ask you, is there another song that we haven't talked about that you particularly want to Well, write? I can go through everything. I know you could. Okay, Fantasia. But is there one in particular? There's Fantasia. Fantasia was a 12-inch single in the early 90s under another name. And oh. I redid it. It had an NWA loop yes. under it. And all the hip-hop and, and DJs used to play it. So everybody's been asking me for years, whatever happened to this track? It's a white label. I had a different name, Johnny X, yeah. underneath it, or I called it Kermichael, which is my middle name. <laughs> and you know, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll redo this one because people wanted to hear it. So that was one, and the other one uh, is Make Your Mind Up. Now, Make Your Mind Up has a long story. Make Your Mind Up is my homage to say Ashford and Simpson because I love their music for so yeah, many years. Yes, yes. And it's got this huge gospel. Make your mind up. It's got that. You know, yes. uplifting feel to it. Yes. This song we wrote, I think, in 1984. You're joking. 1984, oh 85. I wrote it with Toby Baker. Oh, 1984. Toby, yeah. Toby Baker and I wrote this track, and it was going to be for an Imagination album. Toby's written with Shaka Khan. Yeah. He's written with Anita Baker. He's he's done so much stuff. Yeah. Many yes. different people he's worked with, and we're great mates. I call him the union leader because he's he's very funny, and. Um, he kept saying to me, Lee, we've got this song, you know, and you've never ever used it. We got a deal from it. I got a, the deal, uh, one of my imagination albums, we've got a deal for BMG, for, with, because of that song. And yet, and yet, we went to America, we recorded in, the, uh, in Los Angeles and New York and Chicago and um, Philadelphia, and that song got put in the drawer. But I used to sing it on stage. So fans all over around the world knew the song. Mm. And when I do it in shows, people think, you know, I did a show recently for 20,000 people in France, wow. and everybody thought they knew the song. So I think it's about time that we yes. let this song breathe again. Yes. And uh, I've got this wicked bass player on it. Um, I've got his name up for his name. But it's, it's, it's got all real instrumentation yeah. on there as well. Brilliant. So you feel like the old feel when you just used to listen to old music in the 70s. Yes. You'd hear the real bass, you'd hear the guitar, sure. you'd hear the drums. And that's what I wanted. And 
and, and real vocals, mm. you know, very important. Mm. Okay. On the Retropia album, there's a few other tracks I'd like to talk about. Yeah. Um, my good friend Mike Linda from Level 42, yeah, yes, yes, yes. we did a duet of the Stevie Wonder song Visions. Visions. I've actually seen you do that live, I think. Yes, you have, yes. you have. And we actually filmed a video together, yeah. and uh, the proceeds go to SOS Children. Oh. Um, we did it for a particular uh, SOS Children village in Zambia. Oh, um, so we have a really brilliant. nice video. And I think on the September the 21st, there will be the launch of the Retropia website, www.retropia.co. Okay, good. And you'll see a lot of uh, videos. We have some bonus tracks on the album, uh, a special version of Just an Illusion, because mm. people have been asking on that, you know, I got about 3,000, 5,000 million versions, and I get fed up with them, so no more illusion mixes, please. And then there's a, a track called The Truth, and The Truth I'd done for a Greatest Hits, and it never got the light of day, so I kept everything back, including the video. Now it's the time for it to breathe, and so you will see the new video, and we have a different version of The Truth, Mm. On, on, the, on the album because also it's very meaningful. I think it's that people will identify to the track because I think everybody reaches that pathway in their life where they think, you know, I want the world to see. Yeah. It's me. It's yes. about time. You yes. know, I've been given, and, and, and the truth in the lyric has that. Yes. And then there was a track I had called Crash with a K. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it's, it's very funky. It actually takes you back to say the Slime Family Stone, oh, nice. Prince, nice. that yes. kind of vibe to yes. it. Yes. So I think I've kind of got a kind of total, yeah, packaging there. And there's one track my very, very best friend who passed was listening to kind of a couple of weeks before he went and called. Um, I did the best I could, I did my best for you. And uh, we do it in our show, and uh, a, lot, a lot of people have kind of graduated towards this song because the lyric is, you know, I've done all I want, done everything I've done in my life, but you know, after all of it, I really did it for you. Yeah. And I think that's a great way with this, inter in, with this interview to say, I've done this album for everybody. I did the best I could. I did my best for you. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, I do have one final question. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a great ending. Okay. I just it. want to ask you, you know, so you've been making records. Mm. Literally since what we said since the mid seventies, right? yeah, yeah, early to mid seventies, mm. right? Did you ever expect to be doing what you're doing now? Then, mm. did you have any idea that like you were in school making this, you know, mm. Russ and Lee, Liam Russ, <laughs> Russ and Lee, Russ and Lee <laughs> track, you know, for EMI? Get up. This is where we started. Oh, yeah. Did you ever imagine? That's a good word to use here. <laughs> imagine. Did you ever have the imagination to think that you would still be doing this now? No, not really. I think what was in my mind. I was around a lot of artists at a very young age. Doris Troy, Amanda yeah, oh, Bell. Oh, 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 you know, I met her at the Rainbow Theatre, and she oh. asked us to get up and sing for her. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I was dance. there. Yes, we were dancing on stage. I, I met there. War. Um, I met. Oh my goodness! I, I met Linda Khan the Love Squad. I was thinking the other day, we went to see a show. Linda Khan the Love Squad saw us dancing and asked us to come and dance on stage with us. You know, remember? Hello. And it, it was this, these little small little things, and it was bringing me closer and closer and closer to what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Then I ended up doing bingo halls and working man's clubs and George Canning pub in Brixton and you know these pubs and stuff. And I was feeling the hunger, I was feeling the thirst, I was feeling the energy. But I was told at a very early age, and I, it always stayed and embedded in my brain, if you want to do it, it's about the work. Yeah. It's not about being the star. The star is something that you can create quite easily. Because as my song says, it's an illusion. It's, a, it's about being the, the worker, putting the time in, creating, mm. you know, and that stayed with me. Mm. And even when we became successful with the first single Body Talk, I thought, oh my goodness, the work is gonna start now. And yeah. it did, and it continued. And I thought, I'd written one song, which was, became a classic, which is Body Talk, and I thought, it's not going to go any further. And then the whole album just went off crazy and every single track was released. And I thought, oh my goodness. But it was about the work. We were working ourselves all around the world yeah. in different um, radio shows and in a little car in France, going to all these radio stations in Italy. It was about the work. You know, the costumes and the look were great for TV. You had three minutes of time on TV, so you had to give them bam. 
And we took a lot from the theatre, we took a lot from America, and we said, right, we want to be uniquely different. And that sustained us. Mm -hmm. But yet again, it was about the work. And that was a whole situation. And, and, and I've kind of kept that with me in my focus to make sure that it is about the work. You know, if you've got to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse so you get it right. Mm -hmm. And I also say that to a lot of the youngsters today. It's about the work. Yeah. Your body of work that you do. And so I don't really think of how much I've done. I just right. keep on doing you just it. just keep doing it. Yeah, because it will stay there. You know, I, I, I call it my little battery pack. It's yes. there. You know, it's there. I don't think of... I, I, I know it's there, I know the hits we've had and the mm. success, but I don't dwell on it. Yep. I just think I have to make it even more better. Just keep moving. You keep moving. Yeah. Just keep on moving to quote so and so. Or we could go back to Eddie Kendricks and say keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, baby. Well, Lee John, that's brilliant. That's exactly Thank perfect. Thank you. I mean, you. Yes. I would say that um, being interviewed by you is always a classic moment. Okay. Because you have been one of the, I should say, the godfathers of, 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 of a pen, I should say, of writing. <laughs> well, journalism. not pen anymore, not but yeah. Of journalism, <laughs> no, because you've, you, I mean, I'm honored because you've, you've interviewed some of the, the greatest people that have contributed to music, and for you to actually be interviewing me, I'm also okay. very thrilled. No, no, I, I really believe that. Well, I have to tell you, I will say this on camera, I think this is one of the best pieces of work you've ever done. Thank you. Thank you uh, I much. really mean that. It's hard. Though. Thank you. Okay. Well, great, Lee John. Come on now. Keep going. Another, <laughs> another 40 years. <laughs> ah, keep on trying. <laughs> All right. Thank you.